Hello and welcome. Welcome to day 28 of 90. As we are reading through the Holy Bible in 90 days, today we will be reading 2 Samuel chapters 13 through chapter 20, and then Psalm 3, Psalm 7, and Psalm 63. Again, we'll be reading 2 Samuel chapter 13 through 2 Samuel chapter 20. Then we're going to read Psalm chapter 3, Psalm chapter 7, and Psalm chapter 63. All right, let's begin. And it came to pass after this, this is 2 Samuel 13. <laughs> and it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister, Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Ammon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Ammon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it in her hand. So Amon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amon's, Amon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amon's house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it, made cakes in his side and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat him. Amos said, have out all men for me. And they went out every man from him. And Amos said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Ammon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took a hold of her and said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, nay, my brother, do not force me for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly and i whether shall i cause my shame to go and as for thee thou shalt be as one of the fools in israel now therefore i pray thee speak unto the king for he will not withhold me from thee how be it he would not hearken unto her voice but being stronger than she forced her and lay with her and then ammon hated her exceedingly so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her and Ammon said unto her rise be gone and she said unto him there is no cause this evil is sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me but he would not hearken unto her then he called his servant that ministered to him and said put now this woman out for me and bolt the door after her and she had a garment of diverse colors upon her for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins of apparel then his servant brought her out bolted the door after her and Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother said unto her, has Ammon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very raw. And Absalom spake unto his brother Ammon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shears in Baal Hazor, which is beside Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's son. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, now thy servant has sheep shears. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, how be it? He would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him. They let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servant, saying, Mark ye now, when Ammon's heart is married with mine. And when I say unto you, Smite Ammon. Then kill him, fear not, have not I commanded you. Be courageous and be valiant. 
and the servants of Absalom did unto Ammon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass while they were in the way that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king rose and tarried garments, lay on the earth, and all the servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Ammon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now, therefore, let not my lord the king take the thing to his heart and think that all the king's sons are dead, for Ammon only is dead. But Absalom fled. Young men had kept the watch, lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant says, so it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of speaking, that behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept, and the king also and all his servants wept very sore. And Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amahud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. Second Samuel chapter 14. Now Joab, the son of Zariah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom, and Joab sent to Tekoa, Tekoa and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, fiend thyself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had long time mourned for the dead and come to the king and speak on this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, help, O king. And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and my husband is dead. My handmaid had two sons, and they two strove together in the field, and there was none to part them, but the one smote the other and slew him. Behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid. And they said, deliver him that smote his brother, that we may kill him for the life of his brother, whom he slew, and we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my coal, which is left, and shall not leave to my husband neither name nor remainder upon the earth. The king said unto the woman, Go to thine house, and I will give charge concerning thee. The woman is going unto the king, said to the king, my lord, O king, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. King said, Whosoever saith aught unto thee, bring him to me, and he shall not touch thee any more. Then she said, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let not thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, So on. And the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one which is faulty, and that the king doth not fetch home again is banished. For we must, for we must needs die, and are as water split on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth God respect any person, yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. Now, therefore, that I am come to speak of this thing unto my lord the king is because the people have made me afraid, and thy handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid, for the king will hear to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of God. Then thy handmaid said, the word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable for as an angel of god so is my lord the king to discern good and bad therefore the lord thy god will be with thee then the king answered and said unto this to the woman hide not from me i pray thee the king that i shall ask thee and the woman said let my lord the king now speak and the king said is not the hand of joab with thee in all this and the woman answered and said as a soul liveth my lord the king none can turn to the right hand nor to the left from aught that my lord the king had spoken for thy servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in my mouth and my handmaid to fetch about this form of speech. Hath thy servant Joab done this thing? And my lord is wise. 
according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Joab, Behold, now I've done this thing. Go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. Joab fell to the ground on his face and bowed himself and thanked the king. And Joab said, Today thy servant knoweth that I found grace in thy sight, my lord or king, and that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. The king said, let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praise to Absalom for his beauty from the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head. There was no blemish in him. And when he pulled his head, for it was a at every year's end that he pulled it because the hair was heavy on him. Therefore, he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. And into Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to have sent him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again a second time, he would not come. Therefore, he said unto his servants, see, Joab's field is near mine, and he had barely there go and set it on fire. The Absalom's servant set the field on fire. Then Joab arose and came Absalom to his house, said unto him, wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, behold, I sent unto thee, saying, come hither, that I may send thee to the king to say, wherefore am I come from Geshur? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now, therefore, let me see the king's face. And if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Joab came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. Second Samuel chapter 15. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Oh, what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right. And there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I were made judge in the land that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. <laughs> And it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I was abode at Gershur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again into indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he rose and went to Hebron, but Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom resigned, I mean, Absalom reigned in Hebron. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahothophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo. When he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy was strong for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that are with him at Jerusalem, arise and let us flee for we should not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart. Lest he overtake us suddenly mm. and bring evil upon us and smite the city with the edges of sword. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth and all his household after him, and the king left 
10 women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth and all the people after him and tarried in a place that was far off. And all the servants passed on beside him and all the Sherathites and all the Paleanthites and all the Gittites, 600 men, which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to thy side of the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Whereas thou camest, but yesterday should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return now and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And Atai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth and as my lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. David said to Atai, go and pass over. And Atai, the Gittite, passed over and all his men and all the little ones that were with them. And all the country wept with a loud voice and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And Lozadot also and all the Levites were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God and Abathar went up and to all the people had done passing out of the city, and the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here I am, let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king also said unto Zadok the priest, Art now art not thou a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you. Ahamaz, thy son, and Jonathan, the son of Abathar. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok, therefore, and Abathar carried the ark of God against Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the accident of Mount Olive and wept as he went up. And he had his head covered and he went barefoot and all the people that was with him covered every man his head. And they went up weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahathaphel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, Oh, Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahathaphel into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshiped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his face unto whom David said, if thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the council of Hathophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abathar, the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abathar the priest. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahamaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Second Samuel chapter 16. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, <laughs> met him with a couple of asses saddled and upon them 200 loaves of bread and 100 bunches of raisins and 100 of summer fruits and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, what meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young man to eat, and the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King David came to Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimi, the son of Gerah. He came forth and cursed still as he came, and he cast stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimi, when he cursed, come out, come out. 
thou bloody man and thou man of Bilal, the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, and whose steed thou hast reigned, and the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son, and behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai the son of Zerai unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. The king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zerai? So let him curse, because the Lord had said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, body, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and, let the, and that the Lord will requite me good for his curse in this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Apatotel, Ahadathel with him. And it came to pass when Hushai, the archite, David's friend, was coming to Absalom, that Hushai un said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with my with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and his, his people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence. Then said Ab Absalom to Ahathophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And, Ahath and Ahathophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he had left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art a Horde of thy father, then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in and to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Mm. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, bo both with David and with Absalom. Second Samuel chapter 17. Moreover, Ahathophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak handed, and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him will, shall flee, and I will smite the king only, and I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all return, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying, Please, Absalom, well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he had said. And when Hushai was a, come to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him, saying, Ahathophel had spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, the counsel that Ahathophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place, and it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom, and he also that is valent, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt, for all Israel knoweth that the Father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valent men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee from Dan even to Beersheba, as a sand that is by the sea for multitude, and thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of him and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahathophel. For the Lord hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahathophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. 
Then to Hushai unto Zadok and to Abathar the priest. Thus and thus did Ahatha fulfill counsel, Absalom the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have a counsel. Now therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up, and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Hamas stayed by in Regal, for they might not be seen to come into the city And a wrench, wench, went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, the lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Bahurim, which had a well in his court, whether they went down. And the women took and spread a covering over the wall's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, where is Ahamez and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, they be going over the brook of water. And when they had sought, could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, arise and pass quickly over the water for thus hath Ahathophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him and they passed over Jordan by the morning light. There lacked not one of them that was not going over Jordan. And when Ahathophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Hmm. Then David came to Mahanam, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with them. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went in to Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zariah's Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass when David was come to Mahaniam that Shobi, the son of Nahash of Rabbah of the children of Ammon and Machir, the son of Amiel of Lodabar and Barzilea, the Gileadite of Rogalim, brought beds and basins and earth and vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and Mm, parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat for they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness second Samuel chapter 18 and David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousand captains of hundreds over him and David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab and a third part under the hand of Abashi the son of Zariah Joab's brother and a third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite and the king said unto the people I will surely go forth with you myself also but the people answered thou shalt not go forth for if we flee away they will not care for us neither if half of us die will they care for us but now thou art worth ten thousand of us therefore now it is better that thou secure us out of the city and the king said unto them what seemeth you best I will do and the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abashi and Atai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim. Mm, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was was there a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men for the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. And Absalom met the servant of David and Absalom rode upon a mule and a mule went under the thick bows of a great oak and his head caught hold of the oak. And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away and a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didn't thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given three, I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, 
Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king charged thee and Abishai and Atai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against my own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and thou my, thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bare Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. Joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing after Israel for Joab held back the people. They took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood. Excuse me and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahamaz, the son of Zadok, let me now run and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because a king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Kusi, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Kusi bowed himself unto Joab and ran. Then said Ahamaz, the son of Zadok, Yet again to Joab, but Howsoever let me, I pray thee, also run after Kusi. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahamaz ran by the way of the plain and overran Kusi. David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, and a man running along. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Me think of the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahamas, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and cometh with good tidings. And Ahamas called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which had delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahamas answered, When Joab said the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. He turned aside and stood still, and behold, Kusi came, and Kusi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Kusi, Is the young man Absalom saved? And Kusi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. Uh, the king was much moved, and he went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would God, would God I had died for thee. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Second Samuel chapter 19. And it was told Joab, behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. People got them by stealth that day into the city as people being ashamed still away when they flee in battle but the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice oh my son absalom oh absalom my son my son joab came into the house of the king and said thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines and that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants for this day I perceived that if Absalom had lived and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befall thee from thy youth until now. 
And the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king does sit in the gate, and all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people that strive throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he is fled out of the land for Absalom, and Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? King David sent to Zadok and to Abathar the priest, saying, Speaking to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me and more. Also, if thou be not captured of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Baharum, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons, and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king, and there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei the son of Gera fell down before the king, and he was come over Jordan and said unto the king, let not my Lord impute iniquity unto me. Neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my Lord, the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the firstest day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet the Lord, the king. But Abashi, the son of Zariah answered and said, shall not Shimei be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Uriah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king sware unto him. And Mephibosheth, <laughs> the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, and my servant deceived me. For thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he had slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, but my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes, for all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table? What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? King said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said thou and Ziba divide the land, and that people should they said unto the king, Yeah, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king has come again in peace into his own house. And Barzillai the Gilead came down from Rogalim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now Bar Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahaniam, for he was a very great man. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. <laughs> hmm. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king into Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto the Lord, the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it, me with such reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. 
But behold, thy servant Shimham, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Shimham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned into his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Shimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us, wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all? of the king's cost or hath he given us any gift and the men of israel answered the men of judah and said we have ten parts in the king and we have also more right in david than ye why then did ye despise us that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king and the words of the men of judah were fiercer than the words of the men of israel Second Samuel chapter 20. And there happened to be there a man of Bilal whose name was Sheba, the son of Betri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, we have no part in David. Neither have we inherited the son of Jesse, every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba, the son of Meshir. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. David came to his house at Jerusalem and king took the ten women, his concubines, who had left to keep the house and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up until the day of their death, living in widowhood. Mm. <clears throat> then said the king to Amasa, assemble me the men of Judah within three days. And be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichiri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy lord's servant and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men and the Shethrites and the Pelethites and all the mighty men, and they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Betri. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before him, and Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins and the sheath thereof. And as he went forth, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in help, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand, so he smote him. Mm. Therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again, and he died. Mm. So Joab and Abashi, his brother, pursued after she was the son of Betri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favors Joab and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. When the men, the men saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway to the field and cast a cloth upon him. When he saw that everyone that came by him stood still, when he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Betri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Beth Masha and all the Barites, and they were gathered together and went also after him, and they came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Masha, and they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench, and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down, then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say I pray unto Joab, come near hither that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near to her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thy handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They 
were wont to speak in old times, saying they shall surely ask counsel at Abel, and so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Job answered and said, Far be it, far be it for me that I should swallow or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man on Mount Ephraim, she was the son of Betray by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David, deliver him only, and I will part from the city. And the woman said to Job, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. Mm. And they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Beshrei, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city. Every man to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem to the king. Now Joab was over all the host of Israel, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoadad, was over the Chethrites, and over the Peleathites, and Adoram was over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahalud, was recorded, and Shiva was scribe, and Zadok and Abathar were the priests. And Ira, also the Jerite, was a chief ruler about David. Psalm chapter 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble men? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy city, his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I await for the Lord sustain me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of men that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies before the cheekbones. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Psalm chapter 7. O oh Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it into pieces while there is none to deliver. O oh Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I've delivered him that without cause is my enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust. Selah. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of my enemies and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commandment. So the congregation of the people compass thee about for their sakes, therefore return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the judge for the righteous God. Try the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travailed with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and has fallen to the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm chapter 63. 
O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Until next time, beloves, stay blessed.